You know, there's a lot of uh, software packages out there to do animation, to do uh, 2D animation, flat animation. And um, a lot of people don't realize that that can actually be done fairly simply inside of Photoshop. Um, and, you know, really, most people just kind of bypass Photoshop thinking, when, when you're talking about animation, thinking that it's just a program that's meant for, you know, manipulating pixels well that used to be the case but now it does a lot more than that just just uh, you know it's just not for changing pictures and stuff like that um, you can go to your your workspace and you can change it between 3d motion painting photography topography that sort of stuff uh, and if you go to uh, I normally like to go to Windows workspace and put it to motion so that um, I can have a an easier time when, I, when it comes to animation. So I have this uh, character here for the, the new show that I'm working on. And inside the character is the full setup. So I'm going to double click that so you can see. I know that looks weird, but if you look here, that's just the different facial expressions. So I can turn that off, but then I have all of these open. All of these are open because when I open them in a different software package, I have to fix all of this stuff so that it works with the other software package that I, I might uh, I, I'm using. But instead of doing that, I'm going to show you how you can start just animating right in Photoshop. That means I don't have to set up the Photoshop file to go into another. Uh, another software package okay so he's set up the only thing that Photoshop doesn't have is bones so you can't like make bones and that's actually something they need to look at so let's say if I were going to animate this character here I probably should have separated his arms but let's say I was going to animate this character here there's two ways I can do it just like in After Effects I mean not in After Effects but in um, in Flash, you can go inside the movie and animate, or you can animate just regular outside here. So I'm just going to go over it really quick. If you go down to the timeline, when you, if you go down to this, this area down here, you'll see a, a little tab that says Timeline. You go ahead and click that, and from there, you're going to hit Create uh, Video Timeline. When you do that, now you can see all the different layers that you have here. I can animate all of those separately. I can even animate groups at a time. Uh, the great thing about this is if you scroll down, you see you can also animate styles, uh, the pass opacity, and the transformation. If you click this little time thing here, just like if you've ever dealt with visual uh, any sort of um, animation, you know that this uh, enables your keyframes. Keyframes is just a point in time that you want something to happen uh, at that point in time. So uh, you you click this and once you click it that means I created a keyframe at frame zero and if you look down here you see this is uh, where I'm at uh, on the timeline and this is my film uh, frames per second if I go deeper into the timeline so I'm at 10 frames 20 frames and you can see that by the top now I'm at one second right here so if I take this picture and I push it up you'll see there's another keyframe that happens here so now I'm just doing keyframe animation so if I go back down here as you I, you see that I, I I'm starting to animate that right I can even go in here copy it I can right cl click it copy it come down here now the thing is they have a lot of work to do I can't just paste it here okay what I have to do is I have to click on this keyframe and then um, then paste it. So I can't just click on this timeline here and just go, go right click and paste. It won't do that. You see I have all these different custom uh, menus and stuff that, that starts to pop up. So if you have a problem with uh, copying and pasting keyframes, that's exactly how you would do that. So now I have him coming up and down, you see. So I can just uh, click this one, shift, click this one, shift, click this one, and I can copy. I can move down the timeline. 
I'm going to click this one and I'm going to paste. So now, as you can see, I'm creating this animation right here. I can go to two frame, I mean, uh, 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 two seconds, click inside of here, create a timeline, uh, go to two seconds here, and now you'll see I can have access to the arms and legs and stuff the way I separated it. So let's say I'm just going to quickly go inside the body. Actually, let's, let's do a leg. So I'm just going to go inside the leg. I could do the arms here. The arms might be easier. And the reason why the arms look this way, because the arms are as a group. That's why it's, it's grayed out like this. All I have to do is click down and I can go deeper inside that group, or I can animate the entire group as one. So I go inside of here. I like to click all of this because I never know what I want to animate. So I, I click it all at one time. And I can go a few steps down. Now I'm just going to go into this position. Ooh, that looks nasty. Okay, so I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to X out of that. I'm going to... So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to uh, animate the entire arm as a group. Now I'm showing you this as... Um, I'm showing you this as a, a demonstration, but he, this character is not really a, he, this character is split apart for another program, so that's why I have the arms separated like that. So he's not really set for, to be animated inside of a Photoshop, although that's what I'm doing. If I were to do this for Photoshop, I would make this all one. Here, let me just do that. I'm not going to save this anyway. So I'm just going to make this. I'm going to right-click this. I'm going to hit Convert to a Smart Object. Now that I converted that group into a Smart Object, I can still go inside the group and still manipulate the arm, and I still have access to different parts of the arm here. But I'm not going to do that. And, and I, keep going, I can keep going deeper and deeper into the character. So I'm just going to take this smart object and now I'm going to hit transform here seconds there. I'm going to rotate that. Alright. So as you can see, I'm now transforming that. Now, one thing that might get you a little confused is as I'm doing this, let's say I go down here and I want to I want to do it again. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to change my pivot point to the corner. And as I'm doing this, you can see that there is there's nothing happening here. Other programs will give you as soon as you move it, it will give you um it'll give you a keyframe. But I have to hit return in order for the keyframe to pop up here. So now as you see, I have this this going on here, see? So if I go back into the main timeline, so I hit save, I save that, I can go ahead and close it and I go into the main timeline. It it's doing it at the exact same spot that I asked it to do it inside of the arm uh, the arm group. But it should really give you an idea that uh, they incorporated a lot of important uh, things in here that allows you to actually be able to make a full production in Photoshop alone. And remember, Photoshop not only does the 2D, it does the 3D. You can actually have a 3D scene with 2D mix. And part of the the show that I'm doing, the web web show that I'm doing, I'm actually doing a lot of that in Photoshop. I'm doing a lot of the 3D in Photoshop. And I'm doing a lot of the 2D stuff in Photoshop. Some of the compositions are in Photoshop because i got to go to Photoshop anyway. 
And I would wager that in the future, Adobe's really going to push the envelope with this. Uh, it's going to uh, Photoshop will be Premiere. It will be um, After Effects. It will have all of that into in, in one. It'll have all those things in one. It'll be a massive program, but it'll be a bit more efficient because you don't have to shift between different programs. They actually have a program something like that, but it's not. It's not exactly like that, and that's the way they're going. So let's say I'm done with this this um, this animation. Uh, I can now export it. So I click this little button down here. I'm going to export a movie. When I click this little button down here, the little arrow, is going to go ahead and open up a dialog. Uh, and it's going to initialize. So it's starting to initialize. Come on. Don't take forever. All right, so we're back. So it already it it, it uh, organized everything. So now I just hit render. You know, these are the standard settings for rendering. I can select the folder that I want it in, uh, the encoder that I'm using, the format. This is a great format, especially for if you're going to put it up to YouTube. Uh, and I'm not really going to go over all of this because it's self-explanatory. But if you do have any questions about this, if I'm really skipping this and I shouldn't be, go ahead and uh, go ahead and send me a message. All right, and so that's it. That's how you can create animation in Photoshop. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and uh, text me, I mean email me off the YouTube channel. And if you have any ideas for any other tutorials, uh, go ahead and send me a message and uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll talk to you soon.